It's that time, Les. We got another edition. <laughs> Here we go. It's, we're back for another Les Kevin More Tech from UTechIT.com. Yes. And today's guest, we had to beg, plead, right? Yeah. Pay big he, money. Yeah. He's, he's not a Business fan of cover art. He's not a fan of uh, audio or visual or uh, pictures oh, or uh, <laughs> video or anything like that, right? right? Yeah. But we have to get him on because he's... Probably the wisest guy I know in Ann Arbor. We got all these lunatics Did running you say around. Wise Ann Arbor. guy, wise or, guy, yeah. Or in all wise terms, <laughs> wise guy is probably okay. a better term for him, right, Les? That's perfect. Uh, but a longstanding member of the community, doing a lot of positive things. Mm-hmm. But uh, anybody listening from this point on, because I'm going to shut up, will get their MBA in business from Les and Ron talking here. So, without further ado, Ron Mauer from Zingerman's. Good to be here. Yeah, Ron, welcome. You're, you don't have to worry; he's not going to shut up. So. I didn't think he would. <laughs> That's what we were hoping. <laughs> he, he's always telling me to shut up, you know? No, I'm not. He, hey, he, so how'd he, you guys... he was the first guy last to pull me aside and said, hey, Van Cannell. I said, yeah. He goes, can I teach you something? I said, sure. He said, remember, it's better to let him think you're a jackass <laughs> than opening up your mouth and removing all doubt, right? So that was lesson number one from Ron. Words of wisdom. Well, he's making up stuff now. But, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the story sounded good. Well, I think it, it's true in this case, but that's beside the point. <laughs> hey, how'd you guys meet? Uh, it sounds to me like there's some great water under the bridge here. It's been a while ago now. I was in uh, on the board at the Chamber of Commerce, mm-hmm. and so was Kevin, and we got a chance to work together there for a number of years, actually. Mm-hmm. That's where I found out he was an Ohio State fan. Oh, how'd that go over? Well, I still decided to work with him. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a struggle, but uh, I did it. <laughs> well, we'd worked together on the uh, on the chamber board, and um, we've had a long time partnership with uh, all things Zingerman's, and uh, I think really we'd worked with Elf, uh, one of his um, uh, lieutenants over there. Yeah, he's uh, the IT director. At yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we called him a lieutenant, right? <laughs> he, yeah, I think it's it a little higher than that, that actually. So, <laughs> but Elf's got a big. We got to keep that down. But no, anyways, um, and, and through some training. It, Zingerman's had done a couple uh, training classes that we yeah. went to, and uh, uh, so it's just been a long-standing relationship. And Ron is one of those guys that uh, we've often had business issues or questions, and, and he's a guy you can go to, and he'll honestly tell you you're on the right track, you're off the right track. Have you thought about this? And it, it, I've appreciated the mentorship and friendship. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a pleasure. Yeah, how'd you get uh, connected with Zingerman's? Well, it's uh, been over 22 years ago now. Must um, be a good fit. They found me in North Carolina where I was working at the time. I was, as they say, between gigs. Yeah, yeah. Right? You were a consultant? Well, I had to do that because yeah. <laughs> the, the business I was with went under. I was a dot-com bust of 20, uh, 2000. Wow. So I was between gigs, as we yeah. say. Um, between playing near my God to the on the last day and, and getting a call from Zingerman's and had a chance to interview with them. I met Ari in, in Cleveland for a couple hours one Saturday morning, and the rest is sort of history. It was a long period of courtship, if you really? want to call it. Yeah. yeah it, it, went about, it went on for quite a while. Yeah? Yeah. 25 so, hours of interviews, things like that. No kidding, huh? That's serious. Yeah, a couple trips to Ann Arbor. So what got the lever, the, the vote? What, what do you think pulled it in for you? Well, I've been used, I was used to doing nationwide job searches, mm-hmm. and I had worked for some pretty interesting businesses. And I had reached the point in my career where I wanted to work for somebody I could learn from mm-hmm. and uh, somebody I respected and, uh, and make a difference. So the opportunity at Zingerman's provided all three of those. And uh, uh, I, I couldn't be happier with the choice I made 22 years ago. I, I, I like to say I got lucky. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah. That's great. You know, a lot of companies, they are like um, they're in this kind of business, like they're in food business. They're in, like we're in technology. But when I look at Zingerman's, like when we've talked at the March Madness, I think there's just so much more. It's the the philosophies of the organization and behind 
you know, the, the things that make make it tick, that make it all put together. I, I just get that sense. That's what's so unique about Singerman's. Well, certainly we're a food company. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're a hospitality sort of destination. Um, and at the end of the day, it's about the service we give our customers. Yeah. So uh, we have three bottom lines at uh, Zegerman's. We like to say it's not all about the profit, which is one of the three bottom lines, but food and service are the other two mm-hmm. bottom lines we have. And we try to balance those three together, and sometimes they are in conflict. And we have to obviously... Right. Almost like a three-legged stool. You can't have one leg too short or too long or it doesn't work. So we, we constantly play that balancing game across the organization. Yeah. So you need profit to make the, the inroads for the organization, the community? Right. They, you know, profit, you know, you don't have an organization long-term if you're not profitable mm-hmm. at some point. Even nonprofits have to be profitable. Mm-hmm. They just right. don't pay tax. Uh, it's not all about the money. I think that would be what we would say spirit of enough's enough and, and, and try to do what you can. I understand that some of our products are a little more expensive, but that's back to where we want the quality to remain where it is. Yeah. And we're not going to give up quality or the experience you get at Zangerman's to make the bottom line bigger. Yeah. I, fascinating. I think that's what I've always admired about all things Zangerman's is that there is a sense of quality in the service and, and it's, it's working with the IT folks. I mean, they know IT. If it's mm-hmm. working with a girl at the deli counter, she knows <laughs> everything about that sandwich. Or if you're mail order catalog, it's did we get it there on time? Was everything right? It's it just phenomenal how everybody thinks that way at Zingerman's. And th- th- you're a big organization, you know, and to uh, get that from top to bottom is amazing. Well, that comes through extensive training that we do, so it doesn't happen by accident. And we have multiple business recipes that we use inside in terms of, you know, how to deal with a customer complaint mm-hmm. and, and things like that. So, um, again, we teach that and we want to we want to live that as we go through and, and we capture where we fall short and it gives us some ideas of what we can do better in the future. Yeah. So that training, you come back to that. I've heard that several times. Well, that's internal training as yeah. well as we provide training externally as well through Zing Train, through seminars or coaching. Rather than coaching, I think the answer would be workshops that we might visit your business and come out and help you with open book management or customer service, uh, things like that. What's, what's open book management? Open book management is where those folks that you talked about on the front lines uh, know what's going on in terms of both how we're measuring all three of our bottom lines, mm-hmm. our service, our product quality, and our, on our financials. So... We incorporate their knowledge in how we or run the organization, so we share liberally information about it, including financial mm-hmm. measurements of, of food quality and measurements of uh, customer service. How do you measure food quality? I, I well, we have because it seems we have subjective. people that, that well. There's actually um, a way in which they do grade the food, whether it's bread or whether it's a sandwich at the deli. They have. You know, all, everything from the crumb of a bread to, the, really? to, to uh, you know, the touch of the of the crust and things like that. So they grade the bakehouse, for instance, grades their product re- regularly during the day and, and, and monitors that and keeps track of it. And then you survey your uh, uh, customers for? We do. Uh, we, we ask about their experience. Um, we modeled ours th- uh, after the book, The Ultimate Question. That's on a scale of zero to ten, which mm-hmm. you recommend your right. your experience or your product uh, to others. Yeah. So, uh, we we get data back from our customers. We also capture when we sense that there's um, a complaint or a which we call code reds, and then or if there's a positive uh, feedback that we hear them say, we ca- we capture that in code greens. Now that's where we write down mm-hmm. what we've heard or what we've seen, including. It's not always complaints. It could be um, what they liked about a product. Um, and sometimes the product's just fine. It's just the way they felt about it. But we yeah. capture that. That's awesome. That uh, 1 to 10 question is... Different. 0 to 10. Or 0 to 10, yeah. You can, you can score 0 less. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want that. No. No. <laughs> no. The, the answer there is 9 to 10 would be a promoter of your product. Right. Right. Seven to eight would be neutral. You're mm-hmm. sort of neutral. Anything below that, you're a detractor. Mm. You know, when you, you don't like something, you tell everybody you know that you don't like it. So you don't want any detractors. Yeah, we're we're fans of that also here. Okay. Every uh, 
you know, so we see the value of it. We use it internally for, for um, you know, us to uh, pinpoint areas for improvement. But it's, it's, that's important. They, it's real simple. Would you recommend us? So we also monitor other measures of mm-hmm. service, including when applicants make application for work. Mm. Um, one measure would be, are we getting back to them within a certain amount of time? Uh-huh. And so uh, we, we encourage people, of course, apply online, but then we have to do something with it. So we like to say we measure how long it takes, and that's a good measure of whether or not you're providing good service to people who might want to work for you someday. Right. That's, but, I remember you saying um, how open you guys are, you know, and it, grading your scales, you know, customer surveys. You don't, you don't hide this five, well, six. The reason, you guys we, don't, address the this, reason right? we don't hide it is we work together to try to address what we learn from those measures. And because uh, if you know the actions you take and what the effect they have on your three bottom lines, you're likely to do mm-hmm. better. You know, we make better decisions because they're, where they're, they're involved in, in the discussion about that. Um, yeah. That's awesome. And then the financials, just share a little bit about that. I mean, how open you guys are with the financials? Because most business owners would be afraid of that, right? Well, we've, you're right. Um, it does take a little bit of courage that way. Uh, many businesses don't even like to share the, the amount of sales they have. We, we visited one customer. We asked the owner out in the middle of a shop floor what their sales were for the year. And he had to look around to make sure nobody was in earshot before <laughs> he told us the answer. And that is not what we do. Yeah. Um, and there are some things we do not share necessarily. Uh, number one, open book doesn't mean it's open to everybody in the world, mm-hmm. right? And the other thing is we don't share detailed salaries and things like that. What we try to do is share things that people have an impact on. So we don't discuss rent a lot because there's not a lot you can do with rent on a day or a weekly basis. But we talk about the food cost, the labor mm-hmm. cost, uh, some controllable costs, how can we do better? And, um, again, getting input from everybody. We like to say nobody comes to work to do a really crappy job. Yeah, right. But if they don't know what a good job is, they, they aren't, it's going to be a lot of different activity that may not be getting where you want to get. That's awesome. So in that training, um, you know, so I think a lot about it sounds like there's a lot of tactical training. You know, here's how you construct. That. But it's, it sounds like you've got a lot of uh, uh, leadership, maybe, uh, training internally, growth within the company. Well, if, if whenever anybody starts at Zingerman's, there's a welcome to the ZCA, which stands for Zingerman's Community of Businesses, where um, either one of the two co-founders has been the ones teaching that class, and they get the philosophy of what we're all about. They go over the mission statement. That's a great idea. And every class we teach. Kev, get right that one down, every, buddy. <laughs> every, every class we teach, we go over um, the business perspective chart and how we want to work with things. And that includes working with principles and systems and culture. So we, and they hear that repeatedly at every, mm-hmm. every class. So it starts to, uh, we like to say think people have to sometimes hear things 30 times before they remember it. So that repeated at every, at every class is where we want to be, including the um, training compact we have where the, we share a hundred percent each the trainee and the trainer are 100 percent responsible for the outcome of that training. It's not just you know, uh, it, if it doesn't go well, it's not on the trainer's fault. It's because you didn't do your job either in terms of what, how can you effectively be part of this training? It be you got to be open to receive. True, true. So you guys create the sense of uh, uh, accountability and ownership that uh, everybody has to have in there. That. Uh, delivers this high-level service, right, high-level product you come to there. Uh, talk a little bit more about when you create, there's a sense of ownership there, not just in owning your, your job responsibilities, but there's opportunities to truly have ownership, isn't there? There is, and we've been working to identify what works for us over the last number of years, and we've imp- implemented a community share program where uh, an employee, as, as early as when they're out of orientation, can invest a minimal, a fairly minimal amount of money, and then they start having a return on that every year based on how well the business does. Mm-hmm. So that it's a thousand dollar buy-in, which we help them pay for through payroll deductions if that's what they want. But then, uh, if the business does well, there's a share that mm-hmm. that gets paid to those folks. Um, we've we've been pretty 
lucky about that, and it's a pretty nice return. People would like to buy more than one share, but we only let them have one. Uh, but uh, the payout the last two years has, has been the maximum that we've established of $500 yeah. a year for a $1,000 investment. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and, and we're looking for ways to enrich that experience. Mm-hmm. So that's, that, that's uh, unique? It's, it is a bit unique. Um, they... Uh, way that works is again it's how well the business does mm-hmm. but the ownership that makes it real is uh, the organization that that's made up it's it's called Zingerman's Experience LLC they own a, a piece of that and that business owns a piece of the intellectual property hmm. so it's it's real that way so wow. um, and that's the part we share across the organization since every business is independent uh, they can be owners or they can be part of their own business, but this way they can share the entire community of businesses. Right. So, um, you know, we're familiar with the Roadhouse, the mm-hmm. Deli, the mail order, but and then there's other businesses, right? With creamery, Cornman yeah, there's, Farms. There's 10 of them. 10 yeah, of them. 10 businesses, Zing Train, Cornman Farms, yep. the Creamery, the Coffee and Candy Company. And these order. are all separate, but... They're independent, yes. Yeah, but... But they have shared ownership, but they're independent. They have their own bank accounts uh, and, and all that good stuff. They have their own EIN number. Getting you know, but Somebody coming into the company that really wants to make a career of it can benefit from the growth. Well, again, the idea is you want to be someplace where you can make a difference, and we yeah. try to help people make a difference no matter where they're at in the organization. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And, and all 10 of those companies were somebody that started at Zingerman's and had a passion or something. Yeah, Talk er, a little bit about yeah, that. Er, early on, they came up with the idea of the community of businesses. If they had to marry two things. A business idea was somebody who has a passion for it. Right. And they became owners of that business along with Ari and Paul, the co-founders. Okay. And so that's how the, most of the business, all the businesses have been you know, birthed, if you want to call yeah. it that. So we also have a business where we don't want to be outside of Washtenaw County either. So it keeps us from wanting to expand and uh, do delis in every college town in America. So and there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that would like us to do yeah, that. Yeah, right. Like the franchise concepts. So or... we've we've developed a vision that says specifically what we don't want to do as much as what we want to do, and we want to stay in Washtenaw County. Because that was a big deal to even have it down at the airport, wasn't it? It was. It was, and uh, at the end of the day, it uh, didn't happen. Mm-hmm. But uh, there were other reasons why that one didn't happen. That would have been a bit of a stretch out of Washtenaw County, but not far. (laughs) (laughs) I-94. But there's so many requests for doing this everywhere, and and it's the discipline, right? You have your roadmap, and you stick to it, right? What we have are people that think it's a good idea for us to do it, but they don't want to do it, right? So, so, gosh, it would be a great idea if you did that. Right. Well, we don't want to do that. So, again, a vision sometimes can be not only what success looks like, but what it you don't Doesn't. want it to be. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so there could be 12 businesses tomorrow or 15 if, if we've got the right people. And well, talk we, a little bit about that, the process of how that can come through, too. Well, well we, we tell people that everybody's a little bit on the path to partnership if they want to do that. And um, it takes a while. Uh, number one, we look for partners that have actually worked at Zingerman's before they come in with an idea. So... It's not typical where somebody comes in with a business and I want to be part of the organization. Um, but um, they, there's a, actually we have a, a fairly detailed process around becoming a partner, and it does need a business. You mm-hmm. can't just, you have, sometimes we have partners that want to be partners, and sometimes we have businesses that want partners, yeah. and you have to marry those two together. <laughs> so the process takes care of that. So, so yes, there, it's, it's, in, it's likely that in a number of years we have more than 10 businesses, yeah. Zingerman copiers, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> All we got to do is have Kevin come and make sandwiches for a year. And we're good. <laughs> I can make a mess. I don't know if I can make anything <laughs> else than that. Not just of sandwiches. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, it's good to be loved. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> you know. The part, it's just not Ari and Paul just saying, hey, we're, we're going to go do this other company. It, it's the other partners that got to buy into this, right? So, it's the other businesses that say, this fits our model, this fits what we're... Right, there's, there's ownership, and then there's governance. And the way we govern the community of businesses through a partners group where all the business owners are on a partners mm-hmm. group, and we use consensus decision-making methodology. So 
And what that means is everybody has to be at least 80% okay with the wording of a proposal and, 100%, and support it 100%. Mm-hmm. So we have actually rules around what consensus means there, too. In addition to the owners of the business being in the partners group, we've expanded to include uh, four staff partners. And that's a, uh, an assignment that a person uh, applies for and gets mm-hmm. selected for, which you are on the partners group as a real partner for two years, and they cycle off after two years. So we have four staff members that represent, excuse me, they bring the perspective of the staff to, they're not, they're not necessarily representing the staff, but we hear what a staff perspective on things are. As you, know, you, get, you can get into a room with people that are owners and for, have been a long time since they've been on the, on the floor, and sometimes you need to make sure you're staying real yeah. with what's going on out there. So the staff partners have worked out incredibly good for us. We've had success for that of that now about seven, eight years. So, so, so there's no need for an undercover boss. <laughs> I don't th- the yeah, boss if, is if, in there. Yeah, I, I don't know if anybody could put on enough makeup to get away with being <laughs> undercover. We're too, we're too small. <laughs> I see those shows, too. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. Hey, so uh, we talked a lot about Zingerman's. Uh, what about you and your, you know, you you came on board personally because you felt you could make the impact. And um, and it sounds like you are, but what, what's your day-to-day like for you? There, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, obviously, I, one thing I do is, is manage the shared services mm-hmm. community. So... We have a, a business that basically works for the other 10 businesses. We provide shared services, uh, payroll, benefits administration, HR, IT, ELF, you mentioned ELF earlier, uh, creative services, uh, a lot of the, uh, the graphics that you see in the magazine or the catalogs and such are all done at a central location, and it leverages the cost of that. So uh, you had... You know, we have a donation coordinator that helps all the businesses take care of the donation requests rather than every business having to do mm-hmm. that. So uh, my, my day job, I guess, would be um, to manage that function along with my ABLE directors that, that each, each segment has their leader. Yeah. And so that, uh, that way we provide quality service right. that, that each business maybe couldn't afford on their own. So. Right. You get a level of an IT director like Elf, as opposed to everybody trying to be on their own. So we have, you know, we have email systems that are across the board, things like that, um, and the security is also a big issue right now. So having some control over um, and some ability to help with that in a central location, we do that. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's the fixer. He's the fixer <laughs> <laughs> on so many levels, right? Um, <laughs> The other things I do there is is uh, I'm a co-chair of the partners group meetings. Um, have done that for over 20 years now, and um, I'm on a, a number of committees. Mm-hmm. We do a lot of cross organizational committees, um, service committee, safety committee, training committee, mm-hmm. and benefits committee. So when when decisions are brought to the partners group, they've had people from those businesses involved mm-hmm. in preparing those proposals. Mm-hmm. And it gives people a chance to shine outside of their business as well and, and get uh, some exposure. Yeah. So um, also involved heavily with the intellectual property side of the business, which is, again, different than the operation side mm-hmm. of the business. And uh, that's uh, interesting in and of itself right now is we're trying to uh, implement a new way of sharing ownership of the intellectual property past the little bit that the, the community shares mm-hmm. owns that I mentioned earlier. So what's an example of IP? Other than the name Zingerman's, okay, the trademarks we have. Mm-hmm. Um, there's um, we have to defend those at times. Uh, there, we we find out somebody in a state in the West is is copying our art directly and putting really? it on their website. Well, we we get to work with them, mm. <laughs> and we ask them to stop. Yes, and sometimes we have to stop doing something we were doing because it, it's infringing on somebody else's trademark. So is suddenly the, the, the training and your approach and the philosophies, that's IP, isn't it? I, I wouldn't necessarily call that the IP, no. I think it's more around just being and able to use the word Zingerman's in your mm-hmm. business, right? It, uh, I think it has some value. Mm-hmm. In fact, I would say the intellectual property um, is probably the most valuable in, you know, asset we have. Yeah. So... Uh, and and uh, we're working on sharing that ownership more broadly than just Ari and Paul. Yeah, it sounds like it. 
so your day to day, I love this concept of the shared services because you know so many companies, it's it's uh, you know the owner entrepreneur what have you, they have to do everything. You know, and, being a business owner is is tough work, right? And yep. I see the shared services as a pathway. Absolutely, we think we're we're an asset, yeah, and and um, I think. They like the service they get. Mm-hmm. I think it's true of any business. Um, when it comes to some of the, ba- over, I call it the support, they would like more support and they'd like to cost a little less. Right. Yeah. Right. Not, but, not that it's your name, but they want more, but they don't want to pay. So, But sharing that, you know, spreads that, that expense. It does. It does. But there's a healthy tension there. I mean, you, we have to be mindful that we're not growing an empire either. Mm-hmm. And that we're doing the work that needs to be done rather than what we want to do. Mm-hmm. So having an ear out and, and working closely with the partners and the managers about what it is that they need from us. And, of course, we bring expertise and there's a, a fair amount of compliance that any business has to be aware of. And it's hard for everybody to be aware of that. So we have to stay current on the various rules, whether it's regarding employment, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, it, it's getting trickier, yeah. right? So, have you gone to the business community outside of Zingerman's with your shared services? That's a great question. The answer is we have we're working on the vision for shared services, and quite frankly, being a shared service for an organization is a big job already, and it's a different skill set to be an entrepreneur for profit business. Mm-hmm. You a you have to have a sales force, <laughs> and you have to have people that want to do that for a living, and so that isn't always true with people that are uh, in administrative roles. They, they're in those roles because they're experts and because they don't want to own a business, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So uh, right now we're not wanting to do that. We do, we do share some of our expertise with a couple nonprofits in town, particularly in the IT world. We, we support Avalon Housing and Food Gathers IT-wise, yeah. and we do work with Food Gathers on benefits administration to some extent. Mm-hmm. But that's more project by project rather than we're going to look for. More passion. For, it's, 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 we, are there businesses out there with love for, a, you know, for the service center to <laughs> be available to them? Yeah. Right. Um, right now, that's not in our immediate future. That's fair. Again, we wrote the vision and we pretty much said that's not what we want to do. <laughs> yeah. So the partners ask us, too, about that. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now, it's where it is. You're 22 years there. So many different people. And, and, and the businesses are simple yet complex, right? And, and there's so many different personalities and egos, and it's diverse. How do you – did you develop a skill set to simplify everything? You know what I mean? Like, like, like you, you make it look easy, you know, and you bring a common sense to – is that just the years behind you doing this, or do you think you always kind of had that? Well, I think there's certain characteristics that you would need to do this that not everybody has. I'll, I'll grant that. Everybody, no matter where you work, you've got diversity in, yeah. in the way people think and the egos they bring and, or the way they want to work. So that's not unusual. It's good. Myself. And you need that. Yeah, you do. So is it true you can't deal with everyone the same way? It's absolutely true. That's true when you manage people as well. Everybody is a little bit different. And uh, the people that don't do well are the folks that try to treat every situation the same way. You know, the single tool doesn't right. always work. Yeah. So I don't know. So well, well, you, just, you just have a knack, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if you can see it less. And, yeah. I, and I'm, try, I'm trying to pull it out, but the, he's so good at just looking through, you see what the root issue is. You know, there's sometimes there's problems, right? It, and you get distracted by what you think the problem is. You're able to quickly identify it. I've seen it on the boards you've been on, you know, people are all doing all this stuff and you're like, ah, that's why I bring one perspective to it and try to, you know, the idea is how we can get together some, you know, so uh, it's about what do we do going forward that makes sense for both parties, right? It's sort of like, if, if you will, a negotiation. Sometimes neither party is really great with the outcome, but you're you're doing the right thing, and you together got to that answer. So it, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, influence without authority. Mm-hmm. Um, the way we're set up, there, there's no – like a corporate, you'd, you'd be at a corporate suite, and the vice president of this would be able to tell anybody in the organization how we're going to do something. That's not the way we're set up. So the authority part is gone, yeah. right? Um, so how to develop influence without that direct line of authority is a little bit harder. It's, it's much easier to be the boss and do it because I said so. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So you come up with the compelling reasons for why you need to have it done that way. We agree on what those reasons are, and the and we work together to. And we always come back to the table. We don't agree on it the first time. We come, we've agreed to come back to the table and keep talking about it. Some things take a little more time to talk it through than others. Yeah, right. And you got to have that patience. True. <laughs> I, I think I like to tell people that's my middle name, but it's not. Um, Somebody have to really work on patience. Yeah. And uh, listening instead of always talking, which. What? I'm not good at that either. But I, I somehow think that's not accurate. Well, you, you don't let emotions drive you. I mean, it, it's common sense, and you can just see what the real issue is, and you have a way of getting consensus. I've always admired that from you. We all know? deal with emotions. It's just when do you deal with them, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what's coming around the corner here? What do you see in the crystal ball? Well, for um, for what it's worth, we are trying to figure out how to – share ownership for the IP, and we've yeah. developed what we call a perpetual purpose trust, which uh, enables, basically, the, the way we want to run is local and employee uh, involvement, and not, if you will, somebody comes in and says, I'd like to buy your intellectual property mm -hmm. and pay you a lot of money, multiple times sales, and then go out and do and say, we'll have a Zingerman's Deli in these six towns and whatever. Um, that's not what we want now or in the future. So by uh, putting in a perpetual purpose trust, which is the, the whole um, the purpose of that, is that anybody who comes in with, let's say, a lot of money and says, I'd like to buy you. I've talked to other businesses that said, we're going to be employee-owned, we're going to be small forever. And two months later, somebody comes in with more money than they thought was available for them, and they go, okay, okay. <laughs> so we're So that would never happen with Ari and Paul or me for that matter, but we're not here forever. So the idea of putting this in place now is such that down the road, should an offer like that come a, a, along, right. the, the answer would be the, the trust would say no. That's their job. They have one job, and that's to say no. In perpetuity. Right. Got so, And then we're, we're looking at ways of after Paul and Ari, uh, if you will, are starting to back away from the business, mm -hmm. and they're both – they're both not in their 20s at this point, mm -hmm. um, that as they are redeemed out, that the ownership will revert uh, majority to the ownership of, of by the staff. So that community share program will start to get more and more of the ownership of the mm -hmm. IP over time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that in the fullness of time, which is also one of my favorite terms, the majority of the ownership of the IP will belong to people working at Zingerman's. And what, because uh, now you're going to enter in more decision makers potentially? Again, um, the IP is different than operating the businesses. Mm -hmm. So Correct. the ownership of the IP will not be uh, very little voting and, and ability to change that. It's pretty much sharing in the, in the benefits of being an owner that way. Um, so the governance of the intellectual property will be closely held. The ownership will be more widely held. Operationally. Yeah, it's more of an earnings ownership than it is, and it's not about the appreciation of the business because we're not going to sell the business to anybody, right? So it becomes an internal market and such. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it is. It's definitely, definitely a different uh, viewpoint. A again, it's, it's people saying this is what we believe in, this is what we're doing, and then always holding true to that. Right. The yeah. trick is not to get too complicated with it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're there to keep it simple, right? Yeah. No, it's not that simple, unfortunately. <laughs> and it's just, we, we try to make it so we can explain it to people. Yeah. And it, sometimes it takes a class to do that. Well, hmm. well, should we have a little toast to Rod? Yes, we should. Uh, before, before you know, we don't do video here, but uh, they can see this was a full bottle when Ron started, yeah. right? And uh, <laughs> that, that is not true. <laughs> no, that is not true. We, this, was, uh, this was our prop here. We were hoping to get that bourbon sponsor. We thought we had somebody on the line. And it, like yeah, a fish, it must have ripped out or something, the gills. But uh, we like asking, uh, <laughs> what, uh, what's your favorite flavor of bourbon there? What, what's my favorite bourbon? Yeah. Wait, wait, when you're doing that, dealing with the emotion thing off to the side? Well, I don't, I don't deal with emotions with bourbon. That's a, that's a bad idea. Uh, I enjoy bourbon, and, and Woodford Reserve is one that's a go-to for me, as well as Maker's Mark 46 sometimes. Can really? Be good yeah. One. yeah. Um, I like to spread it around a little bit. Right, yeah. My, my granddaughter bought me two different ones, did a lot of research over Christmas, and they both seem to be 
going away. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm not I'm not like a single person, you know, single bourbon person. Yeah. But, um, You're not looking at a, a full uh, bottle finally. Is it an angel sip? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, if you guys could get me a bottle of plants, I'd think highly, highly of you. So. <laughs> <laughs> More highly of you. <laughs> well, you can get them to think of us. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, hey, Ron, thank you for coming on. Cheers. It's uh, been very educational. You can have a shot there out of the less Kevin, more tech. Less Kevin, more tech. Yeah, bourbon glasses. Thank you. Thank you for being Thanks, on. Thank Ron. you for sharing your wisdom. We appreciate you. You're welcome.